Proverbs 3, 14. This one, we'll have some fun with this one. Proverbs 3, 14. For the merchandise of it, speaking of wisdom, is better than the merchandise of silver and the gain thereof than fine gold. So let's look at the first phrase, first of all. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. So we just looked at the fact that the man that finds wisdom and, and gets understanding is happy or blessed or fortunate. And then in this verse, 14, and the following four verses, 15 through 18, Solomon gives us several reasons why this is the case. The first reason why the man who finds wisdom is happy is that the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. Now let's define merchandise. It is the action or business of buying and selling goods or commodities for profit, the exchange of commodities for other commodities or for money. So that's, what, that's the definition of the noun merchandise. Now, he compares the merchandise of silver with the merchandise of wisdom, right? For the merchandise of it, so wisdom's merchandise is better than silver's merchandise, right? Now, if we learn what we can, if we, we apply what we know about silver, we can learn something about wisdom. Because we know things about silver. Everybody's pretty familiar with silver. It's been around since, you know, the dawn of time, and people have valued it forever. It's been highly sought after uh, because it is a metal that is rare, valuable, and useful in a variety of applications. That's one of the reasons why it's money. It has widespread appeal due to its beauty and to its utility, and that made it a commodity that could be traded for any other commodity, which is the definition of money. That's what money is. It is the universally uh, universal medium of exchange. So over time, people recognize that this, this stuff is rare, it's durable, it's, uh, it's not easily corruptible, it can be melted down, it can be uh, divided into smaller coins, stamped, you know, it's... It's very useful for uh, all kinds of things, and therefore it became money. So it's for these reasons that its merchandise surpasses that of most other things on this earth. Merchandise, it's exchange value, essentially. Why people like to use it for exchange? Because of the properties that it has. <clears throat> so what are the reasons for this? Let's go over each of them. So the merchandise, or the exchange value of silver, is high because... Um, it has desirable uh, properties to it. But wisdom has even more desirable properties to it. But let's look at some of the desirable properties of silver, and then we'll see why wisdom is better in each of these categories. So silver is rare, it's valuable, it's beautiful, and it's useful. But silver is even more rare. I'm sorry, wisdom is more rare, more valuable, more beautiful, and more useful. Let's look at each of these. So wisdom is so rare that when Solomon was looking for a wise man, he lamented the fact that he had to look over a thousand people to find just one. Look at Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 28. Now I'd say that's pretty rare. Right? If, if, if somebody says, you know, this disease only affects 1% of the population, we'd say that's, that's fairly rare. You know, you're not going to meet hardly anybody in your lifetime that has it. Well, one one-thousandth would be 0.1% of the population, right? So that, that's, a, that's a rare find. This tells you something about mankind, that we're not very wise as a whole, considering what Solomon said. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 28, he said, Which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Okay, so... He can't find a wise man, hardly. He finds one among a thousand. He says he can't find a woman at all, which is interesting. <laughs> but, I mean, we're not doing much better if it's only one out of a thousand, right? But, and, I mean, if you think about it, though, that's probably about right. I mean, if you think about all the people that you know, that you would look up and say, like, that guy is a wise man. You know, he makes good decisions, but then he's the kind of guy where I can call him up and ask him a question, and he just has the best answer like, just an answer that's like, yeah, why didn't I think of that? Like, oh, that's, the, it's, it's perfect. It's exactly what I should do. Like, I, I probably, I'm sure I know 
a couple thousand people in my life. And I can't think of more than about two that I would just look up and say, wow, now that is a wise man. So I, I'd say Solomon's probably about right. I mean, it, that's a rare find for sure. Uh, wisdom is so valuable that it can, it is said to be the principal thing. Proverbs 4 and verse 7. Proverbs 4 and verse 7. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Principal means first or highest in rank or importance. That is at the head of all the rest, of the greatest account or value. So, when wisdom is said to be the principal thing, it's said to be the most valuable thing, right? And isn't that one of the properties that makes silver so precious because it's valuable? Well, wisdom is the most valuable thing. Fourthly, wisdom is beautiful. It is as beautiful as fine jewelry, Proverbs tells us. Proverbs 28 and verse 12. You think about how valuable wisdom is. Wisdom, if you have it and apply it in your life, it's going to save you all kinds of trouble. It's going to promote you in all different areas of life. Um, you're going to be sought after where people are going to come to you for advice and things like that. So yeah, it's, it's extremely, exceedingly valuable. Uh, Proverbs 25 and verse 12. It says, As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. So the wise reprover is like an earring of fine gold. It's a beautiful piece of jewelry. So a, a, a person that is endowed with wisdom has a beautiful appeal to them, right? Spiritually speaking, of course. And then lastly, wisdom is useful. Silver is very useful for, especially today, I'm, I'm sure in, in, in earlier times, silver would have been useful for jewelry. It would have been useful for making, you know, shrines and that, that kind of stuff. Um, silverware, of course, right? Um, forks and spoons and teacups and things like that. But today, silver is even more useful because it's used in a lot of electronics, in solar panels, and it's, a, it's one of the best conductors of electricity in the world. There's, there's very few conductors that are better than silver. That's why a lot of times whenever you, you pull out a circuit board and you'll see where the connector, where you actually connect the wire there, It'll either be silver or gold because it's, a, it's an excellent conductor. It, they just don't make wire out of it because it's too expensive. It's too precious. Right? It has other uses that are more needful. But anyway, wisdom is, is exceeding, exceedingly useful. Um, it guides a man through all of life's decisions and it enables him to choose the best means to the proper ends. So rare, valuable, beautiful, and useful, just like silver. So as Solomon said, it truly is better to get wisdom than silver. Proverbs 16 and verse 16. Because the thing is, silver can't get you wisdom, right? Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? You can give a guy a whole bag full of silver and he's not going to get wisdom. You can send him off to school, he's not going to get wisdom. But if you have wisdom, you get lots of silver, right? You ain't going to get any wisdom with silver, but you'll get lots of silver with wisdom, uh, Proverbs 16 and verse 16. It says, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? This is one of, I, don't, I never counted them up, but it's one of a relatively few places in the Bible where an exclamation point is used. You notice that? Um, so when an exclamation point is used in the Bible, you know that it's probably a, a fairly emphatic point. And I think I've made a pretty good case why it's better to get wisdom than gold and understanding rather to be chosen than silver. Then Solomon says there in, in Proverbs 3 and uh, in verse 14 that the gain thereof is better than fine gold. This is the second reason that the man that finds wisdom is happy because getting wisdom is actually better than fine gold. And the gain of it is is more. There's more gain to be had. Uh, gain is increase of possessions, resources, or advantages of any kind. 
consequent on some action or change of conditions, an instance of this, profit, emolument, opposed to loss. So, I think we pretty much knew that anyway. When you, when you gain, you increase in possessions or resources or advantages or something, right? Um, so fine gold is, if, if you were to get fine gold, you have gained a lot, right? It's something, you've gained something that, that is very valuable and precious. Um, fine gold is even better than regular gold. Because regular gold would have impurities in it, have other metals mixed in with it, hadn't been, hadn't had all that stuff burned off yet. But fine gold is of superior quality, choice of its kind, uh, choice of its kind, free from foreign or extraneous matter, having no dross or other impurity, clear, pure, refined. So if you look at like a Canadian maple, the gold coin minted by the Canadians, it will say... 0.9999, 0.9999, four nines, I think, on there. So it's point, it's, there's only one thousandth, one, one ten thousandth of a percentage of, of impurity in it, or one thousandth of a percentage, one, anyway, um, 0.0001. So one thousand, one, one ten thousandth. Yeah, one, one ten thousandth um, of impurity. In it, so that would be considered fine gold, certainly. Those maples are beautiful. I think that's probably one of the most beautiful coins, um, yeah, on the planet. I, I I think so anyway. Fine gold is one of the most precious metals in the world. Now the gold, uh, the gain that can be uh, gotten by gold is exceeding high, but it pales in comparison with the gain that wisdom affords. Now let me give you some reasons for this. So let's, th- let's see what gold can get us and then what wisdom can get us. So gold can fill a man's house with possessions, but wisdom gives him the sense to resist doing so. Think about that. You can't take wisdom away. That's right. You can't take wisdom away. That's right. That's right. Look at Proverbs 15 and verse 16. See, you can do a lot of stuff with gold. The Bible says that money answereth all things, but the wise man would actually restrain himself from doing many things with money, even lawful things. All things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. Right? All things are lawful, but all things edify not, uh, the Bible says. Proverbs 15 and verse 16 says, Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, that you don't own stuff. Stuff owns you. And... I know this from personal experience, not, not really my own personal experience, but um, from watching family members, and I've seen how this works, and I think that's why, one of the reasons why I am the way I am, because sometimes you'll, you'll end up swinging the complete opposite direction of your parents. If your parents were off on one side or the other, you know, really extreme with something, a lot of times, sometimes the kids will either follow right in their footsteps, or else they'll go totally to the other side. And I think that's what happened with me. Because my dad is a hoarder, and I am a minimalist. I don't want to, I don't, I I try to keep things as simple as possible. And I've seen what happens. Because the more stuff you own, the more it owns you. It's just more stuff to maintain. It's more taxes to pay on it. It's more, you got to keep it up. You got to, buildings fall down if you don't constantly work on them, and cars break down, and just, It'll keep you running all the time. Ecclesiastes 5, 11 through 12. It says, When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? And I know people like this, that they literally just buy stuff to look at it. But they only to look at it until they buy more stuff to pile on top of it so you can't see the other stuff that's buried underneath it. I think for some people it is, it's an addiction like any drug addiction is. That they just, they get their fix by going to an auction or going somewhere and buying something if it's a good deal especially. And it literally, I think it's an addiction. I think they get a dopamine rush in their brain and, and then that, that fades quickly and then they got to go buy something else to get that rush again. I, 
I think it's, an, it's probably a legitimate mental disorder. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. Even if you were rich enough to pay somebody else to maintain it all, you still have to worry about your employees or your servants maintaining it all and taking care of it all. and It ends up owning you. Gold enables a man to travel the world, but wisdom teaches him that time spent in the house of God is far more valuable. You see why wisdom is better than gold? Proverbs, I'm sorry, Psalm 27 and verse 4. That's, that's Proverbs. Let's see. Psalm 27. <clears throat> One thing have I desired and of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. See, wisdom teaches them that the, that the house of God is the most important place to be. Look at Psalm 84 and verse 10. Another one of my favorites. It says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. So a day in God's courts, in other words, a day in his house, better than a thousand. A thousand no. Anything. There you go. See, you, you, you knew where, that, where I was going with that. A thousand pieces of gold, a thousand pieces of silver, a thousand houses, a thousand vacations, a thousand anything, right? A day in God's house is better. You've probably heard me say that before, haven't you? A thousand what? Well, stick around, you'll probably hear it again. Gold allows a man to live in pleasures. Wisdom teaches him to live in obedience to God. Look at Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 3, 13, pardon me, 12, 13. This reminds me of the verse in Proverbs where it says, Wisdom is good with an inheritance. Because if you did get a large inheritance without wisdom, the large inheritance will, well, for one thing, it'll be gone very quickly. And it will also destroy your, destroy your life. Um, it says that uh, wealth gotten by vanity shall soon be diminished, and an inheritance gotten hastily, gotten hastily um, shall come to naught, or something to those effects anyway. Uh, Proverbs 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes, pardon me, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Not to live in pleasures, not to serve ourselves, but to serve God. That's why we're here. That's our purpose, is we were created for him. Here's another one. Gold makes it possible to eat whatever you want. If you have enough money, you could eat anything that you wanted in any quantity that you wanted it, right? But wisdom teaches moderation. Wisdom teaches that even though you can eat anything you want, it's not wise to eat anything and everything that you want. Proverbs 23, 20 through 21. Be not among wine bibbers. That's somebody that drinks a lot of wine. Among riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. And usually those two, three things kind of go together. When you eat a pile, then you get lazy, right? Especially when you get fat, then you get lazy. When you drink too much, you get tired, you get hungover, you sleep in too long, and then come the rags and the poverty. And then Philippians 4, 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Gold will make you many friends. Proverbs 19 and verse 4. It says, Wealth maketh many friends, but the poor is separated from his neighbor. And every man is a, is a friend to him that giveth gifts. The, the Proverbs also tell us. So you, you make a lot of friends if you have a lot of money. But wisdom will filter out and exclude most of those friends, quote-unquote. Uh, Proverbs 13 and verse 20. 
you will have so many friends and so many family members that you never even knew you had if you win the lottery. They'll be coming out of the woodwork. I've been meaning to call you for 25 years. I just haven't gotten around to it. I just thought I'd give you a, give you a buzz, see how it's going. Yeah. Well, call me back in another 25. Proverbs 13 and verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Good idea to filter out those friends and only pick good ones that are going to build you up, that are going to um, be like uh, the iron that sharpeneth iron, right? Instead of bringing you down. And then 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33 says, Be not deceived. And you know when he starts out with that, that this must be one that's easily to be deceived on. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So be careful who you run with. Because chances are they're going to rub off on you. Your goodness is not going to rub off on them. 